Hello there, Skeptic Squids. In the previous video, I showed you how to prep sample holder for XPS. In today's video, I'll be going over how to mount a sample onto the sample holder and how to clean it afterwards. So let's get this camera focusing on the bench. Let's get started. As in the previous video, we start off by gloving up because we do not want any oils on our sample holder and we also we also do not want any kind of contamination so that is oh i'm having difficulty installing new gloves <laughs> now we're all gloved up i'm going to take a little kim wipe as in the previous video to be little place where we place our sample holder. Now, we can remove a sample holder using a tweezer and which is one I have prepared for us in the previous video. Now, before we begin, we will obviously need the sample which there we go. That's a sample we'll be installing onto the sample holder. And then we will also need some sterilized toothpicks. We use these just to make sure that we are distributing the sample onto the sample holder evenly. Now, I suppose you could use a tweezer or you could, you could use some other implement, but then you'll have to sterilize the implement after every mounting of a sample and if you have a hundred samples to mount then uh, <laughs> you're going to be in for a very long day i will however need my little polymer tip tweezer to remove the little cover on the top there so let us get started now i'm going to gently apply pressure on the tip of the sample holder and i'll just nudge off the plastic protection. Now, now depending on how sharp that is, it could be a little pain. Let me, there we go. And we remove it like that. So there we have our exposed carbon tape. We can then take a little bit of the sample and just gently pour some off. Very gently because we don't want to, we do obviously do not want to pour out the entire contents of the sample tube. There we go. That should be enough. Close this immediately and I'll place it out of the way. Take the little toothpick and then gently distribute powder across the sample holder. Now, depending on the color of the powder, this could be quite difficult. Right now it is pitch black on pitch black. So it's not easy to see. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but if you angle your head um, on the same plane as the incoming light, you'll see that the rough surface of the powder absorbs the light and the reflective um, surface of the carbon tape comes off as looking gray because of the reflection. So then you can use that to judge how evenly you've distributed the sample uh, powder on the sample holder. Now sometimes the sample um, could be quite rough uh, and brittle. So then you can use the, two, uh, the, the I almost forgot the name of the toothpick. You can use the toothpick like this. You just crush up the sample so you have an even distribution. Now, this obviously takes a bit of care and practice. Now, I do not particularly care too much for touching the, the, the toothpick because this is going to be a once-off sample. Um, and I'm not gonna reuse these gloves to mount another sample. That is very important. You do not want to be getting the sample onto your gloves and then handle another sample because you're gonna be cross-contaminating the surface. 
So you have to be significantly more careful than I am being at this point. But because I'm just mounting a single sample and I won't be reusing the gloves, it's not a big issue. So now you will see, you will see that the sample is obviously all over the place there and it looks quite messy. Now, what you can do, is you can pick up the sample by the little um, tab there and you can actually flip the sample and hit it against the bench to get off all the excess material. go and it seems that we have a tiny bit stuck there which we'll just remove with the tweezer and continue there we go so now the sample is um, mounted onto the sample holder and there's uh, little to no um, contamination there well not really contamination but um, debris I should say now I've prepared another Kim wipe, which we will now um, place on the side. And we'll remove this because this is all contaminated now. We can place the sample like that. Let me just get that in frame. And now you'll notice that there's no way to identify the sample. It's looks exactly the same as all the other black powders on the sample holder. So what we can do is we can take we can take a little beaker, clean beaker, and place it over the sample. Now that would actually prevent any debris from uh, and dust falling onto the surface and we can name the sample before it goes into our instrument. Now, I will just call this Dan's Sample. Obviously, you will name this according to the material you're analyzing, and also, you probably don't just have one sample. But you can have different names and everything. But now, that is ready to go into our XPS. I mean to say into the into the uh, load lock which takes the XPS. I'm not going to describe that fully in this video and that because I'm going to make a specific video on how to mount the samples inside the chamber and how to move the sample into the preparation and then analysis chamber. That's all coming in a future video. So we can leave that to the side. Now I'm going to just uh, stop the video right here and make sure that I uh, wipe off all the powder that I've made a, a mess on here. Uh, it's a bit awkward working with the um, video uh, with the with cell phone and the mic and everything, so I don't have enough space to put a proper uh, um, paper towel here to minimize any spills. So I'll just clean up this table, and I'll get to the second part of the video where we'll be um, cleaning off a uh, sample holder, so that we can store it in our samples, ready to be prepped again in a future uh, instance. Now, after you've removed the sample from the XPS device, we will need to remove the, um, the carbon tape that was attached to it and the sample that was mounted on it. So what I like to do is I just use a piece of ripped paper towel. And here we have a sample that I've prepped earlier. Now, I'm touching this with my gloves I used previously, and the reason I can do that is because this is going to be removed, then it's going to be put in acetone, and then put in the ultrasonic bath to clean it fully. So I don't particularly care about getting it dirty. So what I like to do is a toothpick. Now, of course, this toothpick you can use to clean until the toothpick breaks because eventually it will break. Now, what I like to do is I like to snap off the point to make the toothpick a little blunt. And then 
I apply pressure on the tab, like so, and I start on the side and I lift up the, the carbon tape very gently. The reason I'm doing it gently is so that the carbon tape doesn't rip. The moment it rips, it's obviously not a train smash, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to remove. So I gently work my way like that, and I'm doing it slowly to show, but obviously you can really go for it. And there we go. Now that's removed. I just put it on the side like that, because I'll be throwing it away along with the paper towel. But I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but there's obviously now still a couple of spots of dirt on this sample. Older. So I use the Kim wipe and I apply some, some acetone. Like that, that might be too much acetone. And I just wipe it off. So it's nice and clean. You can see there's a bit of dirt now on the Kim wipe. And I clean off the edges and the sides. And now this then goes into a beaker like that and I fill it with some acetone and now this I will fill I will fill with let's say about four to five samples sample holders I should say and um, I'll cover it with some paraform now some some paraform and that would create like a not necessarily a, a good seal i don't aim for a good seal i just don't want all the vapor to escape that easily especially when it goes into the ultrasonic bath because then it could evaporate as the temperature goes up but now after the ultrasonic bath we can then pretend that this has gone through the ultrasonic bath and uh, what you then do, so just to reiterate, we can pretend now that this thing has gone ready for the ultrasonic bath. Obviously, I'll, I'll, after this video, I will put it through the ultrasonic bath to clean it properly. But I just want to show you this next part, because otherwise it'll take another whole video just to do that. I like to place on a Kim wipe, and after spending half an hour in the ultrasonic bath, it will be nice and clean. But now there's some acetone on there, which is going to be an issue. So all we do is we take a bit of compressed air. Be right back. We take some compressed air. I like to, with clean gloves, I like to just apply gentle pressure on the back tab to eliminate the amount of surface area I cover with my fingers. And I just blow some air directly down, not full force. Just a little bit, although that might be very annoying to hear. That would be enough to dry it off completely. You'll see that the moment you put it on the Kim wipe, the Kim wipe will actually go wet from the acetone. But as you blow it, it evaporates and the Kim wipe looks dry again. By then, you know it should be good to go into the sample storage. And that's it. It's really that simple. So, in the next video, or at some point, I'll be going through how to put those samples into what we call a load lock and the garage. <laughs> and uh, I'll go through how to uh, how we keep track of these samples because they all look identical essentially. I'll show you how we keep track of them and now we move them through this device behind me to get uh, well, to, to perform XPS or X-ray photoelectric. Um, I hope you found this uh, interesting and I hope you enjoy the series of videos I've been posting and I hope also that you're looking forward to seeing more what's going on in the lab. So have a beautiful day and take care.